Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying with Jim Ashura. Today I'm going to tie a fly. I had a request for an edible arrangement fly. Now I looked it up and uh, I don't have the exact materials that are on a couple of the sites, but it appears to me that it's a pretty versatile uh, fly that you can substitute quite a bit with. Now to start out, I have it on a jig hook you can use a regular scud hook this is the number 320j from lively legs this is a size 10 i guess you can tie these down to whatever small size you want down into midge sizes and the bead that i have on in there it on there is a lively legs slotted tungsten bead this is a 3.3 for this size 10 and the slotted bead you can see it makes that jig hook it puts all the weight on the bottom or the top of the hook in this case but when you fish it it'll be on the bottom and it'll be like a jig I'm going to use uh, some this is white or ivory Hemingway twisted thread it is six up that'll work and you can you can tie these using an orange thread fluorescent orange to give you a hot spot on the head we're going to start out by wrapping the thread and you can see because of the fact that that's a slotted bead it's a little bit more it's a little difficult to get that to sit correctly so you want to get it to where it is all of the bead is on top and then I kind of just hold it into position and I give it several wraps there to, to to lock it in keep it from rolling away on me or rolling over to the wrong position so you want to be able to keep all of that weight on the bottom just like that we're gonna bring our thread back to the bend or to the rear And I'm actually, since this is such a large hook here, I'm going to go around that bend some. Let's kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what it would look like on the, the scud hook, which is curved. So I went around the bend some. Now I'm going to make a dubbing loop there. I'm going to take out a large amount, maybe about six inches so we need it at least 12 inches we're going to make a dubbing loop and i dropped it not a problem hey just twist that open so i have my dubbing loop and we're going to put that into the material clip to hold it out of the way for the time now since most of them had an an amber colored here's amber colored uh v-rib but this is a midge size i have one that is a larger one this is a medium size and this is brown so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my orange pen and i'm going to color that base of thread with the orange marker and that'll help it give it a little bit more of an orangish color as we go through there I'm gonna even put some on my thread it'll help give that amber color I'm gonna take that uh, rib that V rib and I'm going to tie that in and make sure you have it flat against the hook shank and the other thing we want is you don't want that tag you want to leave us a, a decent space almost one bead length where to stop it and I'm going to bring that back and kind of get that a little 
little more even there. Now I'm going to take, they want Mirage tinsel. I don't have Mirage, but I do have this pearl holographic or hollow tinsel. And it's just going to be the underbody. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. Where'd my scissors go? There they are. Then we're going to tie this in. And we're going to... I need to put a little more orange on my thread. We're going to just tie this in. And now you want to make some tighter wraps here. Just to keep that even so when you wrap your V-rib you don't have big big uh, ridges or so it it doesn't make it wobbly, throw it off. I'm going to take that tinsel, I'm going to wrap that. Turning it up for me just makes it a little easier to see the point of that hook. And you can see that's a little more on the orange side there. You can see that color showing through. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. And we're going to take our rib. And we're going to wrap this. Again, just so I can see the point of the hook better. Try not to twist the rib as you're going. Make sure it stays on there on the flat. Yep, I'm going to back that off. Pull that. There we go. Try to keep them tight, but you can have that little bit of space in there. And you'll see when we get to putting the dubbing in. And we're going to tie that off. We gave one more wrap. There we go. We'll go ahead and remove that excess. Now we're going to take our dubbing loop. I'm going to take my dubbing twister and put that in there. Now we're going to take our dubbing loop. I'm going to turn that upside down so I can work around it better. And mostly what they want, Senyo's uh, laser dub was what they were looking for. Here I'm going to use this is Hemingway UV dubbing and this is a nice cream color here. So I'm going to take that and it, it, it's pretty much sticking together there. So I'm going to take some and what you want to do is you want to cut this cut that off like this side here is has a loop I'm gonna trim that so that I have cut ends on both sides and the purpose for this is you want to have a spiky dubbing in there I'm gonna put that in there I'm gonna take one more pinch one more small pinch and we're gonna put that in now you want to you want this to be kind of sparse now I'm gonna go ahead and twist my loop what I do is I pinch it down here and then I twist my dubbing whirl 
and once it gets tight then I let go of the thread and there you go now I want this spiky so I'm going to go ahead and take my brush there basically turn that into a spiky brush now we're going to wrap our we're going to follow the grooves of the rib as soon as I catch it into the groove there we go I'm just going to let that ride up, following the grooves of that rib. We get to the top. We can go ahead and tie that off. Bring our thread back to that rib there. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tease out this dubbing there a bit because I think it's a little bit long and I'm going to trim that bring it down over here what the effect that you're getting here is the hue and you're going to be able to see through it when it's in the water and here's our body Now, for the thorax, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black CDC feather and I'm going to make a dubbing loop for the black CDC feather. Yeah, I'll take my dubbing whirl and I'm going to make a dubbing loop. If you are in the practice of splitting the thread then go right ahead now I'm going to take my CDC feather I'm going to trim off a little bit off the front because I'm going to put this in my dubbing block and here is my dubbing block homemade you simply put them together cut a slice in there and I'm going to put this right on that slice and I'm going to take my bodkin needle and I'm going to push the shaft right down into the slice and here we go. I have the the CDC feather in the dubbing block I'm going to take my little one and one inch uh, chip clip put it on there and then we can pull that out And here's what we come up with. Now I'm going to just trim the trim that off. I'm going to even this out a little bit. I can see through there. I can see the fibers through there. So if you get a chip clip that you can see through. Of course you want the chip clip to be a smooth chip clip. If you look in my materials playlist, you'll see how to make the dubbing loop block the dubbing block and I explain how to make that and more about the tools so I'm just trimming off the CDC feather and here we have our CDC feather for the dubbing loop I'm going to take some wax Oop. see it how wide that is I want to get a loop on there there we go we'll wax our thread we're gonna put our CDC in there and I'm going to spread this out a little bit you have to be very careful once you get it in there because you could pull these out very easily 
we'll spread it out and I'm going to do the same with my dubbing twister again I'm going to pinch the bottom give it a twist and there we have our our basic CDC hackle you can take a dubbing or a hackle pliers and put it on the thread and you could get rid of the big bulky dubbing twister now we could go ahead and wind this I'm gonna stroke everything towards the rear as I'm going Yeah, tie it all in, and now I'm going to just tie that off. Now we can trim away the loop, and we can wrap the head. Take our whip finish, three loops. And with the orange thread, you can make a hot spot collar with it. Go ahead and trim off the excess. Put a little bit of head cement on there. I always use Sally Hansen's. And now if I have a couple long ones there, I could just go ahead and break them. And this imitates a caddis pupa, a caddis or a caddis pupa coming to the surface, or just rolling around the bottom there. And when it gets wet, you can, you'll see how, uh, how much nice how nice it is you'll be able to see the rib through there and pretty nice fly and here we have the edible arrangement hope that you learned something from this video hope that you would subscribe to my channel please refer me to your friends if you just do subscribe please hit the notify and that way you won't miss any of my videos Please visit my sponsors and let them know that I sent you. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase any flies for me, go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym. And if you don't see it there, just send me a message. Tell me what you're looking for. We'll figure it out. And most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.